welcome back to my channel and welcome to another episode of Where Is. So today's story is a little different because it's one of those cases where there's barely any information out there. Last week I went to the sand dunes and it's a beautiful area of Colorado. It's about five hour drive for me. And we stayed in a place called Crestone, which is a tiny, tiny place, really small population, like really small town. I took some vlog footage, so I'll be inserting drone footage and vlog footage throughout this video. So I posted a picture of the mountains when I was in Crestone and someone commented and said, hey, there is a missing persons case from that area. Our main reason for going out to this area was because it's actually an area that's really well known for UFOs. There's a town called Hooper, Colorado that's right all in this area and people claim to see UFOs there. There's a UFO watchtower. I'll tell you guys more about that. So this is one of those cases where the possibilities are endless. Today I'm going to be telling you about Crystal and Risinger. But before we get into that, I am excited to tell you we have another Thorn design for this month. And this month's is really cool because it actually incorporates Thorn. My subscriber Sarah created a beautiful design that incorporates my Sun logo into a kind of rose Thorn design and I think it turned out really, really cool. So that is the new shirt for this month. We did really great last month with sales. We are definitely now over $25,000. We are headed to $30,000 raised for Thorn, you guys. Thank you to everyone who has bought a shirt. They are limited edition, so they are only available for the first 21 days that they're live. So this time the shirt will be available on my new merch store. I'm going to be doing all the wear stuff through there so I can donate to them directly. It's just way easier that way. And if you're actually new to my channel and you're saying, what is Thorn? Thorn is a wonderful organization that is working to develop new tools to help us in the fight against human trafficking of children. They do amazing stuff for children who are exploited and just in a situation that you should never be in as a child. The reason it's called thorn is because they are protecting the rose, the rose being the child, and the thorns around the rose are protecting it. So this foundation was started by Demi Moore and Ashton Kutcher. They are very heavily involved in it, and it is a wonderful thing to support. Now, if you buy this shirt, 100% of the profit will go to thorn. All right, so Crystal Ann Reisinger was born in 1987 in Phoenix, Arizona. Now, there is definitely not a lot of detail provided about her, but it is known that she has had a pretty rough upbringing. There's not many details about her relationship with her parents or what exactly happened and I don't want to speculate too much But whatever happened it was not good and in her early teen years She actually moved to Denver to live with an aunt and she moved here because she was hoping to have a better life away from her parents But unfortunately her aunt had really serious mental health issues and after a little while She realized that it was no longer safe for her to be staying with her at the age of 15 The court actually had to step in and remove her from her custody after all of this she ended up moving into one of her friends house just into their parents house they were named Rodney and Debbie and they actually became kind of like her stand-in family since she really didn't have anyone she became really close to them and they became like parental figures for her several years down the road she met a man named Elijah and Elijah said that it was love at first sight for them. The relationship moved pretty quick actually and it wasn't long until they moved in together in a place in Denver and they actually had their first daughter. Her name is Akasha. However, Crystal was not happy living in Denver. Although she loved Elijah and her daughter, she just didn't feel like Denver was the right place for her. Crystal was a very deep and spiritual person and she craved more than what Denver had to offer. Crystal was known to be someone who was very sensitive to energy, very in tune with mother nature, but she felt Felt like being in Denver she was in a concrete jungle and she really wanted to explore the other beautiful places that Colorado has to offer which is a lot so she actually decided to move to a mountain town called Gunnison Gunnison is a pretty small area um, most of the people that live there are there for college um, there's a school there that's decently big and it's a great little town it's really pretty but Crystal didn't feel like she was getting enough of the energy there she didn't feel like she was connecting spiritually so she decided to move on from there and that's when she found a place called Crestone which is the place I was telling you about she actually felt physically drawn to that location and she felt like that is the place that she needed to go to continue her spiritual journey. Crestone is a very tiny town. As of 2010, the population was 127. I think it might even be 143 now, but I am not exactly sure. Either way, it is small as hell. And it's really close to the Colorado sand dunes, which are the largest in the whole country. And the Crestone area is actually surrounded with many spiritual centers and several world religions represented, including a Hindu temple, a Zen center, a co-ed Carmelite monastery, several Tibetan Buddhist centers, and miscellaneous New Age attractions. 
Christians. Creston is said to be one of the New Age religious capitals of the world, which is kind of crazy considering it's so tiny, and is actually considered to be very sacred ground by the Navajo Nation. And Creston is known to be a very safe and low-key area. People really trust each other and get along. People leave their doors unlocked at night sometimes, and it's just kind of like this unspoken safety. And I actually pointed out when we were staying there, because we stayed literally in the middle of nowhere, and I pointed out, like, I feel so safe out here. Like, you could, you could, like, sleep outside, you'd probably be fine. <laughs> and so there is very, very little police activity. There actually aren't even police in Crestone. The farthest police department is about 45 minutes away, so if something really bad happens to you, you better hope you can, like, hang on for an hour or 45 minutes or whatever until they get there. So like I was saying, there's a, another little town near Crestone called Hooper, and this area is named the UFO Hotspot of America because it's known to have many UFO sightings. And in Hooper, there's this dome-like structure known as the UFO Watchtower. I didn't actually get to go to it, but I drove past it. I, like, drove right up to it, so I basically saw it. And the woman who created this dome, her name is Judy Messaline, she said that she has had an air traffic controller from DIA that they get six to eight UFO reports from pilots every month who fly through that valley. She also said that they know of at least 40 psychics who have visited, and all of them have said that there are two large vortexes in front of the tower. The vortexes are portals between our world and other worlds, so that was fascinating to me. I wish I knew about that when I was actually there, because that would have been pretty cool to like try to find, but, but here are some Crestone locals talking about their UFO experience. It wasn't a comet, but it had, it had a, a tail behind it. So what do you think it was? I have no idea. The, the thing is, mm -hmm. um, it crossed the valley, <laughs> which is, I believe, at least 60 miles wide, and no more than a second. UFOs, crafts have been seen in that yeah. area up there. I'll just bring them this, this, um, this whole area is supposedly a vortex. Well, I've lived here almost 23 years, and I've heard lots of stuff, and um, one time, toward the, toward the end over there of the Baca, facing over toward the sand dunes, yeah. there, uh, there were a lot of lights that people saw. I was out just stargazing, and what I saw was a very, very, very bright light coming about from overhead north, okay. um, southward, moving very, very quickly, and no blinking, no, not the typical strobing, and then it got well, you know, it's hard to gauge how far away it was, but then it um, it just took a sudden veer to oh. the left and disappeared, walked out. We really, really felt the yeah. vortex, yeah. and it was amazing. The first time I came here was about nine months ago, and the uh, first thing I noticed is it had this very unusual energy, kind of almost like a vortex. What you do you feel, mean? You feel very welcome, you feel comforted, and there's very unusual things that go on here in the valley though. I mean, uh, here we have almost every religious center that you can imagine is based here. We have uh, ziggurats out over here. We have stupas. We have uh, ashrams, all sorts of things, you know, very diverse. And uh, from what I know, the way the planet works, that we lie on what is called the 38th parallel, which is like a prime location where you have plenty of sunlight, uh, you know, and underneath this land is one of the largest aquifers on the planet. Wow. by the San Luis Valley, and uh, it could have something to do with the sand dunes, I don't really know too much about that, but uh, I have seen a few things in the sky. Uh, we've seen, you know, about four red lights, they kind of do, 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 and they kind of kept skipping each other, and then they would zip far across the sky really fast and be all the way somewhere else. And here's a recording of a UFO in Crestone. What's the matter? What is it? What the heck is that? Look at this. I'm recording it, so I'm getting all the voices. Is that some of like a... What is, is it, it falling? No. It's just standing still. What the heck? Can is it a disc? Right yeah, it looks like a white blood cell. Is it a satellite? No, no, no. No, no way. No. The most legit UFO I've seen. Whoa. Okay. A UFO? The most it's legit a, UFO, UFO I've seen. So, interestingly enough, Elijah was actually very supportive of Crystal not living with him and moving to Crestone. She started working at the Crestone Brewing Company and started playing in a local band. And things were going pretty well for Crystal. And even though she left Elijah and her daughter, she still kept in really good contact with them. Crystal called four-year-old Kasha every day, staying connected while she was trying to settle into Crestone. 
Natasha's dad and Crystal's ex, Elijah Ghana, says it's heartbreaking to try to explain to his little girl why mom hasn't come home. To this day, she still asks for her. She wants to call her on the phone. She doesn't really understand. They said that there was not a single day where Crystal did not call and check in with them and talk to them. So Crystal is very in touch. Not only was Crystal really spiritual with heightened senses, she was also known to be psychic. Elijah said that one day when she was living in Crestone, she called him and seemed very worried. She said that there was something coming in the next couple of days that would happen to either her or both of them or him and that she knew that it was bad and she knew she couldn't stop it. And it's crazy because a couple days later, Elijah was walking home from work when he was brutally attacked by a stranger. He said that he didn't remember most of it, but he just woke up in the hospital with injuries and stab wounds. Crystal actually came up and visited him and took care of him for a couple of days and then headed back to Crestone. Then on July 13th, 2016, two days after Crystal left Denver from visiting Elijah, she disappeared. Elijah hadn't heard from her in a couple of days, which was extremely weird considering she used to call them every day. When he actually did call the police a couple days later or whatever, he found out that there was already a missing report filed about her by her landlord. And this is really weird, but a few days before she went missing, her landlord, Ara McDonald, went to go see Crystal to collect rent from her. And when she did, she said she seemed really distressed, disheveled, just like totally tense. And this is when Ara claims that Crystal told her that the night before she had went to a drum circle and believed she may have been drugged and sexually assaulted. Drum circles are ceremonies that are regularly held on the outskirts of Crestone. Hundreds of people will gather to play drums, dance, and partake in ceremonies, drugs, and alcohol. It's basically just a giant party in the middle of nowhere. Now what's so weird about this is some people claim to have seen Crystal at a drum circle on July 18th which is after she went missing. After her disappearance, they brought in search volunteers, helicopters, and canines to help track down Crystal, but it never led to anything. And eventually, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation was asked to help investigate the case. Now, what's really strange is that when Ara went into Crystal's apartment, she found her cell phone laying on the floor dead, her daily medication that she took every day just left behind, there was fresh food still in the refrigerator, but once they looked at her cell phone, they realized that the last call that came in was from a man with a criminal history of drugging and assaulting women. Now they've never said who this man is or given a name and the landlord Ara also said that she was getting strange reports from other tenants saying that all these weird people were coming to Crystal's unit. So is this a runaway or foul play or something else? At first people thought maybe you know Crystal's one of those free-spirited types of people maybe she just left. Maybe she went to go find herself or she wanted to start a new life. But it was kind of confusing that she left left all of her stuff at home. Elijah said that this just couldn't be the case. He said that she would never just leave and abandon him and her daughter. Some people think that maybe she had an accidental drug overdose at one of the moon circles and people just got rid of her body to like avoid trouble. But a lot of people think that there was foul play involved in her disappearance and that guy that was contacting her probably knows something. This person's identity has not been released. And police have actually said that there are multiple persons of interest in the disappearance appearance, but they haven't released any names. And the sheriff's deputy, Wayne Clark, actually thinks that it was someone from the drum circle, which is what I really think too, especially if she mentioned if, you know, what she said to her landlord was true, then that's probably what happened. 29-year-old Crystal R Ann Reisinger dropped off the face of the earth last July. Yeah, she was living in Crestone, a town of less than a thousand people in south central Colorado, not far from the Great Sand Dunes National Park. So watch county sheriff's deputies say they believe someone who went to the drum circle Circle full moon ceremony knows exactly what happened later that night. Do you believe that there's somebody up there who has more information they're withholding? Yes, I do. Somebody can crack this open up there. Yes. You do suspect foul play could be involved. For her to be gone this long is unusual, so that heightens the chances of foul play being involved. And just take off for a walk and not come back. She left everything that she owned behind. Over there realizes it's all mountain. It's one huge mountain and it's hard to search every bit of that mountain. Crystal's family has set up a thousand dollar reward for anyone that has information that can lead to an arrest. And then earlier this year, an anonymous donor helped them out and they were able to up that amount to 20,000. They're hoping that this will kind of draw people out of the woodwork, that it'll encourage people to just say something. Cause even the smallest things that people don't think are important end up solving cases. And it's kind of just a crazy idea thinking that Crystal just disappeared. I mean, this town is so small, everyone knows everyone. It seems like it'd be kind of hard 
to just disappear. And of course, people have already thought about the idea of alien abduction, and that's what I was thinking about too, because I do believe in aliens. I don't know if they've ever come to Earth or they've abducted humans, but I believe in aliens because the universe is fucking huge. There's no way there's not aliens, I'm sorry. But maybe it is some type of abduction if this kind of stuff happens in that area. But the fact that she had that psychic prediction and that she had mentioned what happened to her at the drum circle, I don't know, but I think what's kind of weird is she never mentioned it to Elijah and they claimed to be really close, but maybe she thought that it would just break his heart if he knew that she was harmed in a sexual way. I think that would really hurt Josh as well. So maybe she wanted to protect him or was planning on telling him later on, but that is really all there is regarding this case. So this one is, you know, a newer case, 2016. I really hope that maybe sharing Crystal's picture that maybe something can still be done. If you or anyone you know has information that could lead to helping find out what happened to Crystal or where she is, definitely get that information to the police. I will have all that info linked below, but I definitely want to know what you guys think happened. Personally, I really do think it was foul play. As interesting as it is to think it was aliens or something like that, I just truly think the evidence is pointing towards foul play. So I really hope that, you know, this case is early enough. I mean, it was 2016, so maybe the police are really putting together a case and maybe eventually we will know what happened and have some answers for Crystal's family or maybe one day Crystal will actually be found. Who knows? But that's it for me today guys. Definitely let me know your thoughts below. Be sure to check out that Thorn design. Remember 100% of the profit goes to Thorn. And that's it for me today guys. I will see you next time. It's unlikely that she's alive. His latest hope. Uh, I want to say some very choice aggressive words but uh, it doesn't bring anything back. It doesn't bring her back. Just saying that I believe in karma. Even if they don't get caught, it's gonna come back. Where'd you go?